there welcome to my channel my name is linda i've got a lot of fun diy home decor crafts for you today and i will say i'm not going to be wearing this uchi sweater <laughs> while we're doing those crafts uh, what was i gonna say next oh what are we waiting for let's get started Today we're going to be working on Rustic Farmhouse Christmas in July home decor, so let's get started with project number one. Now for this project, I'm going to use this about one and a half inch wide wood dowel. It's about two feet long. I got it for 20 cents at Habitat for Humanity. Whatever wood dowel you want, whatever size you want, you can get them at, you know, the home improvement stores. I think Walmart carries large sizes or like Hobby Lobby in their unfinished wood section. You could use the handle off the wood shovel from Dollar Tree or the handle off the plunger from Dollar Tree. Anything like that will work. You could even use like the cardboard center out of a roll of vinyl or a gift wrap. You know, maybe a, a cardboard center that's nice and stiff and sturdy would work. And doesn't matter diameters, just whatever you have on hand. I'm going to cut mine into three sections, about nine and three quarter inches, leaving me a nice little piece for our next project. So this next uh, strip here, this is it. They're all cut and ready to go. All right, I'm going to use some felt I got at Walmart. It's a little bit thicker felt. You could use the thin felt from Dollar Tree. It's fine. You could double it if you want it a little bit thicker. I'm going to go, of course with this as i said from walmart i'm just going to roll it here and see what size i need and then you know cut that length out and then i will use this piece to cut out the next two pieces for our uh, other two wood dowels here perfectly done and i'm also going to trace the end of the dowels onto some paper to give me a little bit of a pattern and then i'm going to cut those out as well out of the felt so um, or batting, whatever you want to call it, you know, because I want to cover this wood all sides with the felt to make it softer, not so hard looking when we're done. I'm going to use fabric from Walmart, this pinstriping fabric. If you don't have that, you certainly could use this paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. Got them like four for a dollar Christmas section. Roll it up. There it is. You don't even have to add batting if you use the paper. If you want to add batting, it does soften it up a little bit. I would go with the thinner batting from Dollar Tree if you're going to add that. Add the paper. See, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but it just adds a little bit of softness to it. I'm going to use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today, and we're going to go ahead and start getting our batting slash felt on, get it on the ends. So we're, I'm going to just kind of show one here, kind of skip ahead a little bit, you know, but we're doing it to all three. Look, I'm miraculously on the third one. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and start getting our longer pieces of uh, felt slash batting onto our wood dowels, and you can kind of stretch it to fit a little bit. Works perfectly wonderful. I get it there and I need to cut off just a little bit of excess here, tiny bit, and then we get it glued all the rest of the way down. Yes, we're making some candy canes, I've finally told you. <laughs> I'm going to do this on all three dowels, of course, like I said, one, two, and three. Now we're going to start on our fabric. The size I need for my size dowel is five inches tall, nine and three quarter inches wide. Just measure your dowel, right? And then I'm going to place it on my fabric, the pattern piece, add a diagonal so that we get those nice diagonal candy cane stripes. So make sure you have that in your mind as you cut out whatever size you need for your dowel or cardboard circle here. Okay, and of course, I'm going to cut out three of those. And you want to cut out your circle ends as well. So we cover all sides. The next supply we're going to need is some cheesecloth. Now, I already have some done from a previous project. You can find cheesecloth in Walmart kitchen section, 2 or $3, but I'll put a little scrap piece out here to show you what to do. So we're going to distress our stuff. I'm going to use this ink. You can find it in any scrapbook section. I'll try to get a link for you. And Amazon, it's Distress Oxide Ink Vintage Photo by Ranger Tim Holtz. And usually, I've just got a tool here. It's kind of got a makeup sponge on the end. You just rub it in the ink and you rub it on your fabric, nice and easy. And look how distressed it's already starting to look. I think that looks awesome. Here you can see the difference between distressed and not distressed. How easy was that? So we're gonna do that to all our fabric today and we're gonna be using this ink throughout our projects today. And you do the same thing on the cheesecloth. You rub it on the cheesecloth and then you crinkle the cheesecloth up so you get nice dark things. You do two or three layers of it. You know, you get nice dark creases and everything in it. That's how easy this is. Once I've got everything distressed up, I'm taking these short ends of my fabric and I'm just pulling on the ends 
to pull up some threads to give it some distressing. I'll do that to all three pieces, just like that. And then I'm also gonna distress all the little circles as well. Okay, now we're gonna start assembling. I'm using that Beacon Fabri-Tac glue again, of course, and I'm going to add some glue around all the edges. And then we're just going to lay our dowel on to this and roll it up nice and easy. Now, when I get to the end, I wanna make sure that I match up my stripes so it looks nice and finished here. So pay attention to that detailing. Make sure as you're rolling it together, you're matching up your stripes there so it looks like one continuous stripe as best possible. Perfect. And then we're going to start gluing on our ends here. I'm going to pop it on here and then I'm going to just kind of pinch the sides together and get it all so all that batting and felt, whatever we're calling it, is all covered up. It looks all nice and finished off. We're going to do that on both ends here. And that's why we distress the ends too. So as we're pushing it all together, it kind of hides any imperfections. So now we've got all three done, magically done. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and use our, you know, distressed cheesecloth. And we're going to uh, get all of these tied together in a bundle. So we have a nice little bundle of candy canes here. So I'm just tying my cheesecloth in a little bow and I'm going to fluff it all out and fluff out the cheesecloth tails here, figure out where I want them to be. And I'm gonna kind of glue things into position here, kind of glue the tail and stuff, because I want them to stay, you know, cheesecloth is really flimsy, of course, and so I want everything to stay in the cute little distressed position that I want it in. So just kind of glue it how you want it, glue the tails wherever you want it, making it all nice and purdy. Once I've got that done, I'm gonna bring in this twine from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna bring in some beads from my supply. And then I've got a little mini ornament. I got these last year at Walmart. I like the round circle. These came from Walmart last year as well in the mini ornament section. You could use whatever you want. You could use these from Dollar Tree. It really doesn't matter. It's your preference if you wanna hang something. I'm also gonna use a little sisal here. I'll make sure I link down below for you. And then I think was last year, I gave out a free printable of these. They're on my blog. I'll make sure I link that in the description box. I use these from year to year to year. They never get old. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use a little piece of fabric here. Kind of combine the two and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So I've got my twine from Dollar Tree in a bow and I'm adding my beads on both ends here one white and one red on each end, of course. If I find them both, <laughs> they roll all over. Perfect, I'm not gonna tie it off quite yet. And I'm taking my round ornament and I'm just tracing it onto that little piece of fabric. I wanna cover both sides with some fabric, kind of give it the fabric look like the candy canes had. So I'm gonna, of course, cut both of those out. And then once I get that done, I'll go ahead and kind of distress up the edges so it looks like the distressing of the fabric on the candy canes on both circles. And then we'll go ahead and just start gluing it. We're just gonna cover the front and back. Back side will be plain. And then I'm taking that circle and I'm tracing it over. You can kind of see it as I raise it up over the quote I wanna use. And then I'm kind of redrawing a new perimeter here about eighth of an inch in or so. So when I cut that out, a little bit of that fabric perimeter is gonna show since I'm gonna glue this tag on top of that fabric. Go ahead, here's cutting it out. Perfect. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. It's going to be hard to see, but, you know, I'm sewing around that little circle nice and easy. Here's what that looks like. Cute. Just adds that little bit of texture to it. We'll add a little more texture by taking the open end of my scissor blades and scraping along the edges of the paper. You can see what that looks like here. Just adds that nice rustic touch and see what it'll look like against the fabric. And then we'll go ahead and glue both of these pieces onto the front of our tag, which is really the back side of the tag. <laughs> uh, all the little details matter. I'm using my uh, Memory Keepers hole punch here, punch through that wood, and I'm gonna distress around the edges a little bit with that ink. And then we're gonna go ahead and I've got some little like beaded uh, bells on wire and pit berries here. I'm going to add this to the center of our bow. Just add a little fun stuff, add a little twine in our um, little hanging ornament here. So we're able to hang that, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and figure out how long I want the tails of my bow to be. And then I will knot that off and cut off the excess. We don't want our beads to fall off, right? So can't forget to do that. And then I've got a little bell on a safety pin here. I'm going to hook it through the twine of that ornament. And then hook both of these through the center of our twine bow. 
perfect. And then we're going to glue on some of that sisal just a little bit. This should give us that little bit of a country, rustic, primitive, all those code names. <laughs> we'll add our bow onto the front. And then I'm going to add some glitter glass here, two kinds of glitter glass I get from ReneeBouquets.com. And I will have the link down below for you. Here's the other one. I'm just using my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. I put the glue where I want, and then I just shake on both glitter glass. You could use regular glitter here. It really doesn't matter. Sprinkle on some glitter glass. And then once I've got everything where I want it, you know, I kind of, I don't show it here, but I turn this over, tap off the excess. And then that makes this project complete. So let's move on to project number two. For this project, I want two different size circles for each end of this spool that we're going to make. So I'm using two wood slices and apparently a kitty <laughs> and two of these thick wood circles from Dollar Tree. For my center, I'm using this leftover piece I had from the last project, right? But remember, we discussed different options. You can use the handle from the shovel from Dollar Tree or the toilet bowl plunger from Dollar Tree or the... Uh, cardboard center of you know wrapping paper or whatever my wood piece here is about four and three quarter inches long just for reference and then I'm going ahead and filling the holes of my wood pieces here with some wood filler so here they are all done and sanded ready to go now if you don't have this this is an option because I know they're out right now at least in our Dollar Tree are these coasters you could use for your ends you could use single or you could use two for each end to double it up okay so that's an option if you don't have those other pieces all right, so what I'm doing now is just taking wood glue and I'm attaching my wood slices to the larger wood circles from Dollar Tree, just measuring to make sure everything is, you know, centered. And I'm going to go ahead and glue my dowel to the center of that as well to one half, making sure it's centered, marking my center of the other side, and then putting that right on top, and I'll let that sit up. Once it's dry, I'm going to use this Waverly Antique Wax, and we're going to paint it all up. I'm not watering it down or anything. I'm using it full strength. I want this nice and dark looking so that it really kind of has that rustic kind of primitive almost look to it. I'm not even going to like wipe off the excess, you know, because a lot of times we wipe it on, wipe off the excess, not going to do it. I just want it full strength. And then once I'm done with that and it's all dry, I will go ahead and take my electric sander and sand it all up off camera. The next thing we're going to need from Dollar Tree is one of these candles things. They come two to a pack. I'm going to go ahead and tape off the little light part. And then I'm taking just some like 220 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding all the plastic of this candle because I do want to spray paint it and it's it's too slick that spray paint is going to come right off before I spray paint I want to go ahead and yes I know it I've got my hot glue gun out nobody freak out if you need to sit down and take a breath do it now <laughs> I'm using my hot glue gun to simulate some melted candle you know wax at the top of our little light here and then this is the brand I'm going to use to spray paint so here it is, all done, ready to go. Just magically happened that way. I don't know. It's the magic of film. <laughs> anyway, I want to lighten it up a little bit. It's too just dark brown. So I'm just taking some lighter brown paint, just using my finger here, and I'm just kind of rubbing it on the areas, you know, where we want it to look like melted wax and stuff. I'll rub it down the main part of the candle as well, just to give it some highlights and give it a little bit of definition. Next thing we're going to do is glue the bottom portion of that candlestick to the top of our spool. And I'm bringing in some beaded berries that I love to use from Hobby Lobby and some other pip berries and rusty bell garland. I think I got it at Joann's last year. This came from Joann's. Other little pieces of, you know, green green stuff, you know, like from Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. A ripped strip of fabric. 
about two inch wide strip. And then this is something I just printed off my computer. I'll have the font in the description box down below. Just use my Microsoft Publisher program, printed it onto some cardstock. I'm gonna sew around it. You can see here it's already done miraculously again. And then uh, sew around it with my sewing machine and taking the open end of my scissor blades again and then just distressing along the edges. And then I'm gonna use some of this ink. Remember, we're bringing this in for all projects today and I'm just going to distress around it and the back side want it to look all you know together and finished off perfect and then i'm just going to wrinkle and crinkle it and stuff and then come back in and use that ink right over those little bends and everything just to give it a little more definition just like that i'm adding just a little string through it i just colored the string with the ink and then we're going to start gluing our greenery on top I'll change the view here for you in just a minute. Yes, I'm using my hot glue gun still. I know it's a change for me. You guys know I rarely whip this thing out, but I'm doing it for this one. Because this, uh, you know, didn't want to sit here and wait for the Fabri-Tac to set up for each piece while I'm filming. Just make sure you use enough hot glue when you're doing this. And just kind of setting the pieces, going back and forth, making it look nice and cohesive and adding in the pip berries. Just whatever looks pleasing to your eye. I just kind of try to make it look even on both sides. Here, we got a nice better view change for you. I know it's quite close up, but I wanted you to see it from this angle as well. Adding in the white pit berries now, and then the cute little rusty bells. Perfect. Going to add in some of my favorite beaded beads here. Beaded berries, I guess. Adding in a little bit more pieces of greenery. We're just about done with this part, but I wanted you to see the whole process. Now, if you take a look here, you can see how I'm kind of leaving the front edge of that spool open. And then also as I'm placing the greenery, I'm not only going out to the sides, I'm also going up so that when we go to put our little, you know, fake candle in, some of that greenery kind of goes up and in front of that candle, giving it a nice kind of pretty uniform look. Adding in a large rusty bell here that came off that one pick adding in a little rusty star here. And I'm taking that piece of fabric, that rip fabric, and I'm inking it up with that ink. I'm gonna kind of cut part of it off here, rip it anyway, a little bit more. And I'm just gonna kind of distress that edge where I cut it and then just kind of just tie a little center knot in the middle of it. Place it there to see if that's where I want it. And I'm gonna bring that tag in. I've got some hot glue on it and I'm going to kind of hot glue that on and then hot glue our little ripped fabric kind of right over that tag. And I'm going to add a little mini bell here and another bigger bell so it looks like a nice little trio of bells in the center with that larger one up above. And then I'm going to kind of, you know, gather my fabric a little bit and glue it into place so it stays where I want it to stay. And then we're going to add our candle in. And once I do that, this project is complete. Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm bringing in these coasters that I showed you as an alternate for the one we just did. You're gonna need five of them. You could use wood slices, you would need five of them. All right, I'm bringing in this style of wood ornaments from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use the stocking. I'm gonna need four of them. I'm gonna have uh, six bells. And then I'm bringing in you know, both of these twine from Dollar Tree and this white twine from Walmart. And I'm gonna bring in some mini wood ornaments, again, from Walmart. At this point, I hadn't decided what I was gonna use. But whatever you wanna use would be fine. And I'm bringing in a bunch of different, about four, five inch length strips of ribbon, crochet ribbon from Dollar Tree, from Walmart, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, whatever you want. I usually have about six designs or so. I'm bringing in some of that felt slash batting again, some of this fabric some muslin fabric and some of this stripe fabric all from Walmart. 
Okay, so first thing we can do is we're using, like I said, four stocking. I want two in each direction. What I did is trace the stocking to begin with, like this. And then I went in about a quarter of an inch or so, and I redrew a new perimeter. You guys know how I do that, right? And we're going to cut out out of the fabric. Here it is ready to go. Now, I've sewed around my fabric. You do not have to do that. But I also distressed around the fabric. You might want to do that to give it a little something fun. You want one for the front and one for the back of each stocking. Then I used that fabric piece, and I traced it again. Okay, so it's a little bit smaller, and you're going to cut that out of your felt. Here it is already done, and it's going to look like this when it's, everything's ready to go. All right, you're going to need one piece of felt for each stocking. And then we're going to come in with that ink. You could paint if you want, but look how much faster this ink is. And we're going to distress around both sides of each of our four stocking pieces. I'm just doing two here to kind of show you. The other ones are already done. Nice and distressed, painted, ready to go. So on each stocking, you're going to glue down your little felt first. And then you're going to glue down your fabric right over the top. If you don't want to use felt, you don't have to do it. If you don't want to use fabric, you can use paper for both sides. Works perfectly wonderful. Right? We're kind of on to the second one now. Same thing, other direction. Gluing on our felt and then gluing on our fabric. Or like I said, you could just glue on paper if you want to the front. Front and back, though, so it's nice and finished off. Just like that. I've got two pieces of twine here. It's probably about 10 inches long of the brown twine. And then two pieces of the red and tan twine. Again, both from Dollar Tree. That one's probably about, oh, 15 inches long or so. I'm going to use my hole punch here to punch a hole in each of the stocking and put our brown twine through first so we have a nice little piece for a hanger. And I'm going to take both together and just tie it in a little knot about a half inch above that stocking or so. Just like that. We'll get the other one done. Perfect. And then I'm going to take that red and tan twine, and right below that knot, I'm going to tie a cute little bow and just let it hang. And I'm going to do this on all four of my little wood stockings. Yes, we're going to make a garland. You guys know I love to do a garland. There's my garland for the year, and here's my four stockings done and ready to go. So for this are five coasters. You're going to need to, if you use these, to kind of sand off the front. It comes off really easy. It's almost like it's a rub-on or something. Just sand most of it off so it doesn't show through. And then what I did is cut a circle out eight and a half inches. Our coasters are about four inches, so I doubled it and went about an extra half of an inch. Of course, you'll need five fabric circles. Now, I've got a piece of thread here. I've run it through the eye of a needle, and I've knotted one end. Okay, we're going to set that aside for a minute. First thing we want to do is take that ink, and we want to rub it on just one side of the fabric and distress it up. And then we're going to bring that needle in. I'm doing it on the light side so that you can see it better. doesn't matter what side you do it. We're going to take that needle from the front to the back, and then from the back to the front, half inch or so apart, front to the back back to the front. Those of you that don't know how to sew, front to the back, back to the front. Front to the back, back to the front. And we're pleating that fabric on our needle, just like this. Pleating it back and forth. And then once you get a nice little bundle on there, just go ahead and pull it through and then continue again. Front to the back, back to the front. Pleating that fabric till you get all the way around to where you started. Okay, get a little bunch, pull it through, just like that. So when you come close to right where your knot was, go ahead and pull that through and pull your needle off. And then right where the knot was, go ahead and pull on that so that you have two long tails sticking out. All right? Make sure your distress side is out, okay? If you need to flip it, depending on where you sewed it, and set that aside for a minute. Now, I apologize because I don't know where the footage went, but with that felt, what you need to do is take your coaster trace it onto the felt and cut out two circles. So what we're doing here now is taking those two circles we cut out and we're gluing it to either side of the coaster. All right? Again, you're going to have five coasters to do this with. Then we're going to take our little fabric piece with our two long tails sticking out. We're going to put our coaster right inside in the center. We're going to take those two long tails and we're going to pull them both at the same time to close up our little circle here. All right? And then you're going to make a nice little knot in the center. Perfect. And then I like to tie it just two or three, four times, however many times you feel like you want to, and then cut off those excess tails. Now we're going to take our plaid fabric from Walmart. I'm going to make a little slit, about two inch wide strip here, make a slit first, and I'm going to rip that fabric all the way down to get a nice distressed piece of fabric. It's about 24 inches long or so. We're going to find the center of that fabric, 
and we're going to place that right over the center of our gather on the coaster. We're going to flip it over, tie a little half knot, bring it back around to the other side, flip it again. And then the little tails I like to put under that center piece. That way when we go to tie another little knot, it'll kind of pinch up the center piece. Bring it up and over just like that and then tie like a little half knot here is perfect. Just like that. Now we're going to bring in some greenery here, a little safety pin, a bell, some pit berries. Going to decorate up our little coaster that's now become a candy. I'm going to put the pit berries underneath that fabric there and just glue it in so it stays. Add a little bit of greenery on each side of our little knot here. Using the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, of course. We want a little bit on here, but not too much. And then I'm going to add the safety pin and bell right to the center of that knot. Perfect. And then I'm going to take some of this ink again. I want to distress up that plaid fabric because we didn't do that ahead of time. And just so it all kind of matches in and looks all distressed together. Like I said, we want it a little bit pretty, but not too much. We want it simple. And then I'm going to take some of this extra fine glitter I got at Walmart. I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue and just put that in places. And then I'm going to sprinkle the glitter right on top as much as I want and tap off the excess. And once this is done, we miraculously, again, magic of film, have five of our cute little coaster candies all ready for our garland. Now, if you didn't want to do the garland, just want to do the coaster candies, look how cute it looks like on a tray here with the candy canes we made in the first project. How cute would that be? Simple, you don't have to do the garland and you have a cute little ensemble here. Just wanted to show you that, but let's continue on with our garland. So for our garland, you're gonna need five of these little eye hooks. And I'm just gonna take my scissors right through the fabric and kind of make a little starter hole and twist our little eye hooks into place. Use my uh, pliers to get these nice in and tight. Make sure when you put your eye hook in, once it's seated, the side of the eye hook is facing forward like this. Otherwise your candy won't hang right, okay? Once all five of those are done, I've got about a 10 inch piece of twine again, one for each candy. And I'm just taking both pieces together and tying a little knot right up above that eye hook, just like we did on the stockings, okay? Again, you'll do that on all five pieces. And I'm bringing in just some of this crochet trim that I got at Dollar Tree. They're cut into about five inches in length here. I'm just tying a little half knot right underneath the knot on that twine. I'm inking it up a little bit. I forgot to do that ahead of time. So you might want to ink it up and distress it out. And then this is what it's going to look like. You're going to add that twine to all five pieces. Now off camera, I decided on the long hanging tags versus the short ones I showed you at the beginning and then four of our six bells and I've got my twine through them and knotted again about a 10 inch piece of twine. The two larger bells will save later for the end of our garland. Now for our main garland, I'm using the red and brown twine and the white twine together. I will usually cut 80 inches of twine and then at the end of each uh, twine I save about 10 inches and I tie it together to make a little loop for hanging then I fold that twine in half and I find the center between the two loops gives me about five feet of hanging for our pieces and then I will attach to the center one of my main elements for the garland which in this case is the candy and then I evenly space that candy across the garland and then the other hanging elements I'll evenly space in between that. So in essence of what I'm trying to say, usually all my hanging pieces, there's about three inches or so of space in between each hanging item. So right now we're getting the main uh, candy pieces on. Of course, I got a different view for you here so you can see. And I've marked up all the everywhere I'm going to hang with the pieces of tape. So as I go to hang everything, I pull the tape off. Now I'm hanging the four stockings where I want them into position. Perfect. We'll get the last one over here. And then I'm going to start hanging the four bells and the long, two long tags. Just like that, pulling off the little markers as we go. Perfect. And I usually find that about five foot of garland is perfectly wonderful uh, length, you know, to hang, obviously. I'm going to go ahead and cut off all the little excess tails of our twine. I like to leave a little hanging for texture, but I will cut uh, quite a bit of it off. And then I'm going to come in with all our different pieces of fabric here or ribbon. I'm using fabric and ribbon here that I've cut. Remember, they're about five inches long or so. I usually use about four or so of each design and usually about five or six designs. And I try to hang them, you know, if I, whatever I hang on one side, I hang it in the exact spot on the other side. 
And that's why now you can see why I leave kind of some tails off of the main pieces that I hang, like the bells and the candies and stuff like that, the tails of the twine. I leave that hanging off because I've got little pieces of ribbon hanging off and it all just kind of looks cohesive together. I decided to hang in some strips of that uh, plaid fabric too so that it kind of ties in the fabric on the candies. And I always love to use the Dollar Tree um, crochet twine because it just... I don't know, it just makes it pretty. And now I didn't realize I was way far to the right, but now what I'm doing is taking some extra ribbon. I usually use about 20 inches. I'm tying a big bow on each end right at the knot where we did that loop, and then I'm using a safety pin and a bell and attaching it to the center of the bow. I'll do that on the right and left side here. And then that makes this project complete. So I hope you like all the projects I came up with today. I came in at the last possible minute for a Christmas in July video, but by golly, I got it done. So, you know, those of you that requested one, here you are. I hope you do try some of these. I think they all turned out so rustic and farmhouse and primitive cute. I just love them. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which project you're going to make right now. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you just wandered in here and you're checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. When bad things happen, pray. Don't panic. We tend to panic, but we must put our focus on God. You may know something doesn't feel right, but going into prayer mode and having a heart-to-heart -heart with God will bring that revival into your life. God will fix your situations in ways that you may not understand, but it'll be in ways that He wants, in ways that He feels is necessary to get your life back into step. You must trust His guidance. He is on the throne, serving up your miracle. His timing will silence your anxieties and fears. He is not done with you yet. He will not let you fall. He will not let you take that step over the ledge. His life-giving flow will bring power in the midst of your chaos. He will protect all that He has for you. God is here. He is with you, by you, breathing the very air He gives you. Step up to the throne, bring up all that fear, all that unknown, and lay it at His feet. He will show up and set those fears ablaze, walking through that fire with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you, giving you the peace you need to carry onward. Trust in the one who has given you life. Trust in the one who knows the way. Trust that he will show up in the midst of all your chaos. Trust in his perfect timing. You know he is the living God who wins with his power. Let that be your calmness in the midst of the panic and chaos. Let God manifest his powerful wave over your heart and life. Let his anointing be poured out over your anxieties. Sit at his feet, lean back against him, breathe in his gentle love, and let your faith overcome your fear. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.